Hello and welcome to the vlog and what is the first of my autumn 2018 cruising vlogs. Yes, you heard me right, cruising on the canals on my own boat. Actually one of the vlogs coming up is cruising on someone else's boat and that's not on a canal but it's a very special vlog and that's coming up fairly soon but for the most part this is the start of my autumn cruising season and I'm going to be heading down the Grand Union Canal. No particular destination, I'm just going to head down the GU for a few weeks and then turn around and head back up the GU for a few weeks. As you can probably tell from the background, I'm in Braunston and I'm all pretty much ready to go but there are just a couple of things I need to do first. And the first one of those is a quick oil and filter change. And the other thing to do was come here to Tradline in Braunston Marina because I need a new forward centre line for the boat. It is an absolute Aladdin's cave in here. Everything you want to do with ropes, fenders, the lot. And within mere minutes, a brand new 18 meter rope, all made up to my precise specifications. Perfect. The reason I wanted this line is that, although like most narrowboaters, I have two center lines that go from an eye about two thirds of the way along the boat, all the way to the back, I wanted an extra one to go forwards. The ones at the back are there for instant, easy access as soon as you step off the boat, whether it's at a lock landing or mooring up, just gives you something to hold the boat with and quickly tie up while you put in some proper mooring lines or something. But they are deliberately not long enough so that if they fell into the water, they couldn't end up wrapped around the propeller. And sometimes for me in a lock, that's not long enough. When I'm doing locks and I'm doing them single-handed, remember, I like to take a rope forward with me to hold the boat on, sometimes to pull it into a better place in a lock, particularly in the wide locks. And because those centre lines that go to the back are short, they're often just a bit too short in some of the wide or deep, or just, I don't know, some locks you just find you're running out of rope. So all last year I had quite a knackered old frayed bit of rope on here as well as a third rope that I took up with me into the locks but it was frayed it was going so I bought a brand new one it is super long but it will never go to the back of the boat it's always here and forwards for when I'm in a lock so that's going to make my life easier and you just put the spliced end there with the end of the rope looped through it on this eyelet and then that will hold tight right time to be off First things first, I will lift off the shiny new stove chimney and stow it in the well deck so it doesn't come off in Braunston Tunnel. TV aerial is lowered, so likewise there's no unfortunate collisions. And we're off. past Braunston's very famous double humped bridge. And past the usefully placed Midland Chandlers. Although I find their stuff a bit expensive, but it's very handy. I always love this bit coming into Braunston. It's very pretty, very canally. And of course the familiar sight of the stop house. Just beyond that you can see the entrance to Braunston Marina. There in the distance, just under that bridge, the first of the six Braunston locks. 
which if that boat is coming towards me could mean they're set in my favour. That would be nice. Now this is the kind of boat I like to share a lock with. Look at that shiny, shiny Russell Newbury. Lovely. They're off to a rally of Russell Newbury engine owners, which seems like a fine idea. Now with another boat coming down, the next lock should hopefully be open for both of us, but it may just be one gate is open, it's hard to tell. Either way, a little bit of congestion. These locks do get busy. Inexplicably, the previous boat has shut both the gates behind them. Presumably they couldn't see us coming. Uh, and the poor unfortunate chap on the boat ahead now finds himself opening my gates as well, because I am single-handing, of course. That's very kind of him. Lock number two, dispatched. It's quite a popular little mooring spot between locks two and three, and there is, of course, the Admiral Nelson pub at the end, which could explain it. Isn't that just a fantastic boat roof garden? I am no gardener, but I do... Um, envy? No, that's the wrong word, but I'm pretty impressed with those who are. There is at least one other boat coming down the lock, so I'm just holding station until they emerge. Lock three done. And an interesting boat moored above it. Motor tug Sharp Ness. One thing I've not put on today, but I really should have, but I wasn't expecting to need it, is some sun cream. It's an absolutely lovely day. Not too hot either, it's just perfect. Prime September day. I've just been told that because of a load of wide beams coming through, Braunston Tunnel has been shut to narrow beam craft while the wide beams are allowed through. That means there's going to be a load of narrow beams waiting to go through Braunston this way and then a load waiting to come through from the other direction as well. And if we all go at once, it's going to be chaos in there. And Braunston, of course, is the tunnel with the lots of kinks in it. I think I might hold back, have a cup of tea and a sandwich before I do that. And here comes one of them now. Will you look at the size of that thing? That is massive. Lock five, one more to go, and then the tunnel, after which I shall stop at Norton Junction, I hope. And there's someone coming out of the final lock. So again, gates should be open and it should be set our way. Great. And now just waiting for this final lock to fill. Apparently no more wide beams coming through. It was shut while that last one came through. Apparently it took him two hours to come through the tunnel. Normally it takes a narrow beam, oh, I suppose 20 minutes. But it's got loads of bends in it, that tunnel, so I would not fancy taking a wide beam through it, actually. Anyway, as soon as this fills, round the corner and into the tunnel. Such a pretty view there. I've got my fleece and coat ready, because it'll be cold and probably wet in the tunnel. I've checked my tunnel light, which is working. I've checked my horn, which is not working. And I've also got the little floodlight, battery-operated floodlight that I have at the back of the boat already. I'm hoping the batteries will last. They're a little bit on their last legs. So as much as I can do, I'm ready to plunge in. I was all set to plunge in behind that other boat with the Russell Newbury engine. But as you can see, there is one coming the other way and he is so close to coming out. He must be just a couple of hundred yards off that frankly, I'd rather just let him come out and then go in after. That's not to say another one won't come after that as well. But sometimes when a boat is pretty much almost there, I just find it easier to wait and let them come out. Saves you the bother of trying to squeeze past each other. 
and I'm in no hurry. Okay, here we go. Dum 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 da dum dum da dum da 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 dum dum da dum. Three hundred meters down, and other than the light at the end of the tunnel, the only other thing I can see is the um, other boat with the antique engine, which went ahead of me. Now, with luck, that means no one else coming the other way. And, like a bat out of hell, I made it through without a single boat coming the other way. Thank heavens. A lot of people like to remind me that I don't like tunnels. In fact, it's not really true anymore. It certainly was when I began boating, but I have, by and large, got used to them. It's better, obviously, if nothing's coming the other way, but on a lot of the straight tunnels, even that isn't too much of a problem. The only one I really don't like is that one, because it's windy and wonky. And even Braunston Tunnel is actually OK if there's nothing coming the other way. So today was a good day. Look at that, a magic passageway on the towpath. Who knows where it leads? Isn't this just grand? This is very pleasing to see. I'm just approaching Norton Junction, and just here, where all these repairs are taking place, I moored on my first ever trip out on the boat a couple of years ago. It was a lovely spot, and the bank was all falling away, and every time I came past it since, there was all this yellow netting up, and basically you couldn't moor. And now, look, they're putting new piling in, and everything, totally reinstating the bank. So, when they finished, once again, this is going to be a superb place to stop. Now, the question as to whether I can actually stop here now, obviously not on this bit, because the piling isn't finished. But maybe round the corner, that would be nice. And with that, my hopes were dashed. I think the presence of the workboat probably suggests no mooring, which is slightly awkward, because there's only a handful of spots once you go through the bridge before you start going down the... Buckby lock flight, which I was hoping to avoid today. Oh well, let's see what happens. Well, wow, what an absolute stroke of luck. I was just chatting to the guys doing the work as I motored past, and I said how much I look forward to this being finished and how I like mooring here. And they said, oh well you can moor on that end bit, we've done that. So here I am, in my favourite spot, just before the bridge, on the shiny, shiny new moorings. I may well be the first person to moor here. Who knows? Either way, I'm jolly pleased. Especially as it has just started to rain. I thought I'd show a few shots. If nothing else, just to say thank you, Canal and River Trust. I know you get a lot of slagging off, including from me. But at times like this, when you see good works being done, I'm very happy to give the CRT a big thumbs up. Because this is a super improvement to this bit. Hope it's not going to rain too much on these chaps. But here I am, moored up just before the bridge, just before Norton Junction. And with that, I think I'll call it a day. <laughs>